Good morning, everybody. FSC Trucking. So it's breakfast time. Woke up here in St. Charles, Minnesota. We got that big snowblower on. We'll talk about that here in a minute. So, time to eat, though. Got my orange juice. Got a Loves here. So, such a fairly new one. I've never been in this one before. So, granted, I don't come this way very often. Got my salad, a little chef salad. And I got my egg cup here. Silverware, got have something to eat with. And two packs of Italian dressing. All right, this over here. Now, most of you guys know, especially you guys that actually do the job that I do here, eating healthy on the road is virtually impossible. But to be honest, it's gotten a little easier. See, most truck stops went to the fast food chains they did away with all the restaurants like the ta they got rid of all the restaurants now it's like popeyes burger king heck even here the loves you got the hardy's but the loves got these salads there's other ones that do the salads too i'm just more of a fan of the loves salads than what's just more of them to choose from the quick trips in wisconsin they got them too and it was the sandwiches they actually got in the quick trips they got a good amount of meat now these tomatoes, not a fan. Those are going by the garbage. Not not eating them. So I've discussed this before. So I tend to think salad by itself without any kind of meat or protein. Really not that good. So protein's good for you. It's brain food, muscle food. Protein any way you can get it's a good thing. So I take the hard-boiled eggs and I cut them up and I'll put them in the salad. They already come with a couple of slices, but I like my eggs, especially in the morning. Actually, I like hard-boiled eggs anytime, to be honest. So I'll chop them up and stick them in there already. All right, now that's two of the four eggs. Take me my little Italian dressing. At the Loves, two packs will do you. The Pilots, there you get three packs. They're kind of small. And mix that bad boy up. I'll pour it in. Then we'll mix it up. Now it's hard to mix them in this bowl because it's pretty full already. And I'm hungry. I want to eat now. So I'll stir it up and eat a little. And then I'll put the rest of the eggs and the rest of my dressing. See this guy trying to get away? I'll just eat him. This guy thought he got away. Eat him too. Now, I know that there are mixes, powder mixes you can put in your drink, shake them up. Um, I've seen that a lot. I never got any of that stuff. Probably should. At least try it. Um, then you got other stuff you see, like on news channels advertised. They are pill form to get more nutrition in you. My thought, basically, when it comes to losing weight, not necessarily eating healthy, but losing weight. It's real simple. Calories burned versus calories consumed. How many calories do you eat versus how many calories do you burn out in the course of your day? Now, your typical long haul truck driver doesn't burn a lot of calories when he's driving. Let's be honest, most guys don't do what I do as far as chaining down and breaking down a trailer. So, you gotta deal with a sedentary lifestyle of basically sitting on your butt and holding the steering wheel. Heck, a lot of you guys don't even got to shift gears, so you don't even have that for exercise. But either way, the idea is real simple. Try everybody, as far as I'm concerned, got to get more greens in their diet because it's the hardest thing to eat. Meaning that 
hard to find sometimes and uh, nothing tastes as good as a steak right so I don't know that's what I do it seems to be working I haven't weighed myself in a while to be honest so if there is weight loss I really wouldn't have noticed but I don't know maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm complete full of crap don't know what I'm talking about Either way, fact is, though, fast food ain't good for you, that's for sure. So, this has to be better than a McDonald's, uh, you know, burger. Alrighty, boys and girls, breakfast is eaten. Let's get the day started. Let's get this video started, too, while we're at it. Got Orwell behind me. Orwell is my 1984 Peterbilt 362 cab over. We got the little green APU running. It's like 53 degrees out, so hence I got to have the hat and the hoodie and all that. But uh, it's nice and crisp in the truck. We already went inside, obviously, to get our food. By the way, I noticed the diesel price versus gas prices. It is two cents shy of two dollars a gallon cheaper for gasoline than diesel. Like I said in previous videos, I've noticed with this recent spike in fuel prices, gasoline didn't seem to move very much. Diesel, they cranked the hell out of that, didn't they? So I figured I'd mention that. Just see you see that's Minnesota it's a little less than Wisconsin now consequently we're talking about in my past videos about truck stops and the smaller guys seem to do a better deal quick trip in Wisconsin near my shop 491 I've seen a couple of them coming out here across Wisconsin 488 here at the loves 534 and that's cash price and credit price don't matter 534 for the same thing so you know granted different state I know but still little guys seem to be a lot cheaper there's a quick trip at this exit but I have no idea what that charge so with that we got this big huge snowblower I picked up yesterday we're gonna go ahead and get into that so you know what while I'm yapping let me go ahead and let <sighs> so with that let me go ahead and quit yapping let me get Orwell fired up I would say warm them up but the engine's already warm the engine's already warm green APU takes care of that runs hot water from the APU through the engine through the heater core inside the truck keeps me nice and warm keeps the engine nice and warm so I have a nice easy start up this morning uh, it also does maintain my battery so if I'm running my inverters computers whatever you name it battery stays charged warm batteries warm engine warm me that's most important and no crazy panty ass cold starts with this truck anymore either so there we go you can't beat that right I know I know I know it's an engine and it makes noise guys for whatever reason this big microphone that I use right here it's very sensitive and to be honest it does pick up the noise and make it louder than it is just me standing here listening to it I mean what do you think's quieter idling exactly with that let me shut down the APU and fire up the big caterpillar engine Tell you what boys and girls i wish i started that nice in the morning i love my green apu that is so nice sleep comfortable engine starts up beautifully oh man they done better than that now i have mentioned in the past about me only running one exhaust stack right now see this one stack right here it's not even connected what's up with that well the green apu sits underneath the cab right there as you can see and originally the exhaust pipe kind of came down and ran right across the top of where the APU is now. So what I did is I cut the pipe, I patched the ones this side of the Y pipe with, ironically, the same steel I cut out of it, 
So we're only running to one side for now. This will be made active again, just not going to be in the immediacy because uh, got big stuff going out. My kids, big trip planned out for going out west with uh, with the Razor and the Jeep and so on. So we're going to Glamis. We're going to be out in Glamis, California in the sand dunes, 5th of November for maybe the next seven, five, seven days, somewhere in that range. But we got this one last run we're going to do. Might be one more after this, but definitely this one, obviously, because no, it's right there. It's loaded. Let me go ahead and show you this exhaust. So right there, you see my exhaust, how it's capped off. It goes on the other side of the battery box. It comes out the other side. It used to drape down low, but right around the top of the APU right here, this is the APU, you can't walk on top of it. You come right through here and then an elbow up. But that won't work the way it goes anymore. So that's going to have to be redone. That's all right. So what do we got here? We got this big, huge snowblower I picked up yesterday in Appleton, Wisconsin. It's a MB unit. These are pretty cool, actually. I like them because, well, one of the cool things about them, first of all, that snowblower, it looks like you could throw a car in that thing, right? It would just I wonder if it would grind up a car. Yeah, you know exactly who I'm thinking of. Uh-huh, yeah. So, I'm sure they sell these used for uh, testing purposes. <laughs> yeah, somebody else does that content. That's a whistling diesel thing. That ain't me. All right, so uh, it's got two engines in it. The rear one is what propels the truck. There's another one in here, and that runs the hydraulics that runs that blower. So, twin engine truck, how you like that? I mean, there's size comparison. Stole blower. Yeah. That's big stuff. <laughs> well, what we're doing is we're taking this out to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, the Sioux Falls Regional Airport out there. That's where this is going. So we're gonna take this out there, drop it off, and, uh, most likely head back empty. Uh, like, how can you do that? Well, it's kind of baked in a cake going back empty. Now, if we do find freight to come back with, that'd be nice, but it's unlikely. There is uh, one place that we might be able to pick up at, but they ship everywhere. So they did offer me a load. I turned it down only because it won't suit the needs of where we're going. You know, I got to be home this week. So today's Tuesday. And uh, we're planning on leaving either Saturday or Sunday, so I for sure got to be back at the shop, my shop, to get everything ready to go for our big trip out west. I did also get news from my older son, Sean, that he'll be able to come out for the entire time that we're out there. Ah, I just stepped in the mud. Ah. No, it's not dog do. It kind of looks like it, though. I walked in this crap. Oh well. I did get confirmation from my oldest son, Sean, that he will be able to come out for the entire time that we're there. We're gonna meet Matthew there. His schedule was uh, already a known thing, so there's no conflict with him coming out. So that's the big thing. Oh man, I can't wait. We did Silver Lake Sand Dunes, and uh, we had a blast. Took my Razor, took my uh, son's Jeep. Uh, Sean came out. We had a had a big fun time there but I've always wanted to go to Glamis since back in the days when uh, I didn't have anything and I had friends that lived in Chatsworth California um, it's a shame man I, my one buddy man he got divorced and he decided he didn't want to be friends no more I that was weird I don't know why but I always liked them especially their sons they were cool they're a couple older than me and their sons were a little younger than me I was kind of in between so Worked out good, but uh, yeah. But they introduced me to the world of the off-road sand dune stuff, so that's what I'm hoping it do. So we will be filming the Glamis trip. That will be on FSC Speed Shop channel. That'll, that's where that stuff will be. So uh, yeah, we'll be out there at Glamis after uh, we're getting to November 5th. We'll probably be out there five, six, seven days. So if you guys are out there, come by, say hi. You'll be able to find us. It. Not that hard. Let's go ahead and quit yapping. Let's get some ground covered. Let's get our well down the line. Let's get that snowblower to where it's got to be because uh, it'll only be a matter of time before they need it. Winter's coming if it ain't already here. 
All right, let's go. Add some air to the rusty, trusty seat. Oh yeah, it's rusty, trusty, all right. Meaning, wore out. A little bit of heater in the front here. And, uh, yeah. Sounds silly sitting on my office in here. So if I set the wheel like this with the two spokes down and the one up, my clipboard hangs in there perfect like that. There's a little bit of pressure and I lean forward, push against my belly, and I can write out my paperwork. The other thing sometimes I'll do is I'll jam it in like so. Same thing, except it dips up a little, but at the back side and the front side. Now if I put it the other way where one spoke faces me and the other two four out, my laptop sits in there perfect. So I kind of like have two wheel positions that I use when I'm doing my paperwork. So since I got to do that, we're going to set up paperwork style. There we are. All right, just little things to show how I do it here, I guess. Oh, let's get our logbook caught up. Get, get the, that crap done. By the way, Orwell is a 1984. Any truck currently... 1999 uh, and older is exempt from ELD requirement. Um, Orwell would be exempt from the new requirement they're trying to shove on them, which is bike truck does not have a computer, there's no ECM, so there's no way to hook up a computer to a computer that doesn't exist. So Orwell would still be exempt, but a lot of you guys with the gliders and the, see, the way they worked was real simple. 2000 model year, because usually an engine is a little older than the truck. So 2000 model year trucks could have a 99 model year engine. Those were exempt. A 2000, like a late 2000, would have a 2000 model engine. Those had to have ELDs. Regardless of engine manufacturer date, VIN numbers uh, dated from 1999 and older were exempt no matter what. But now they're trying to change that again. Orwell has a mechanical engine, there's no ECM, so that's kind of that had something to do with why I went with an 84 and to be honest with the purchase of a second truck to put a driver in they're also trying to burn us with speed limiter mandates now too and uh, even like your your D deck 2 D deck 3 um, you know your your uh, 6NZ you know your 5 EK cats and whatever Cummins all of them those could have speed limiters in them too so I'm really leaning towards the next truck I buy being fully mechanical, just like Orwell. I just don't know if uh, it'll be easy to put a driver in a cab over like this. Um, even with an APU, functioning air conditioning and heat and so on, um, most of those trucks do not have cruise control even. So this truck does not. Uh, so would that become a problem with hiring a driver? Um, it's kind of weird. It's like if I buy a 99 and old an older truck, I guarantee it they'll put the mandate through. If I buy an older truck that's fully mechanical, they won't put the mandate through. You, you watch and see. Um, how do you how do you hedge your bets? Um, you know, what, or what do you do? You know, if you're trying to plan like I am, and you're trying to make a plan for the future, how do you plan on that? Um, you go both? I can't afford two trucks. I can't even afford one right now. So, what do you do? I don't know. We'll figure that out. Well, we'll talk in the future. Either way, we'll get this paperwork done here. Well, alrighty, let's get rolling. You know what I'm going to say next, right? already left so go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button there please say it helps a lot we're trying to grow the channel and I'm trying to change up the content try to change a little ways how I do it so again hook a guy up throw that subscribe and hit that like leave a comment good or bad it's okay if it's real bad I'll get back to you in a snippy way. <laughs> oh, 
all the comments. Comments can be quite a trip sometimes. Eight percent trucks use lower gear for 300 feet. that love the rolling coal we started the engine after sitting a while so you'll get one good shot of coal after that you won't get anything anymore don't know why it does that but it does facing downhill so it's gonna make the left or immediate uphill walking down a hill, make sure he doesn't fall, try not to run the trailer off into the gravel. And that rat bastard in that street truck decided to damn near take my mirror off. That was uncalled for and unnecessary. He didn't have oncoming traffic coming at him.
30s, like 35, 37 for low temp, 39, 40 for high, you know.
maybe you can, I'm not sure. He said you can, but anyway. It's closed! Can't get 
hit a truck there. I just figured I'd mention that. And, you know, drivers don't ever stop to go see things. It's right there. I forget the name of the, I forget the exit number. I can put it in the video. But it's right there. Everybody knows the song Eddie Arnold wrote, or maybe he didn't write it, but everybody knows the song. The song wasn't even close to accurate. Not even close. That song, I think, actually did both sides of that battle of uh, a, a disservice. It was totally wrong. Pilot, so loves right there. What was it before Pilot? I kind of remember it being something else before Pilot. Got it. Oh, I can't remember. I love that right there. Look at that stainless steel back doors of the trailer. You see a nice reflection of Orwell wave at me. Certainly interesting. a gallon down there at the BP it was 490 how is that like seriously how can I justify that opinion they play games with the diesel a lot more than they play with the gas I keep saying diesel consumers don't they're not a voting group like the soccer moms are and if they pay five bucks a tank full more they're all pissed off and the news kisses their ass and all of that with diesel bend you over the fuel tank and the soccer moms don't realize that they buy the diesel when they go shopping. They're not explaining that. Even on the news, they talk about the trucks and the ships, and they go, they call it gas, like they burn the gas. Since when is an ocean going ship burn gasoline? It's supposedly smart people, but not that smart. I digress. Anyway, if you're gonna hear anything out of me, you remember. Just remember this, gasoline only moves your ass. The economy runs on diesel. I probably should have just rolled it. I got her stopped, but eh. Got them hot though, I can smell them. Huh.
don't make it, I don't make it. The car behind me didn't make it either. right on National Guard Way. Sure enough. Obviously we're going to a maintenance shack. Well maybe that's not obvious, but is this right here. Yeah, it looks that way. I see snow plows, buckets for payloaders. See another Oshkosh with a broom on it. Not Oshkosh, it is me or whatever you want to call these things. this bad girl down. Before I forget, because last time I did, I dropped my rear bags. Oh, as the trailer jumps up and it tries to break the shock absorbers off. You know, when a trailer rises up, it hits the shocks, or the shocks try to stop the axles from going down too far. And if it does that, then, if it does that, then it could hyperextend the shocks, break them.
get put my air hoses away. I put these ramps down to blower doesn't bottom out. All right, cool. I noticed that with your other unit over there. Cummins for the blower, cat for the truck. Yeah, we noticed that. Why? I don't know. Whatever they got laying around. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
it's probably a lock in there like the Peterbilt. You gotta oh. pump it a bunch of times just to get the latches to come off. Looks like it's right oh, there. it's got a red motor pushing it too. Never mind, the other one had a cat. Yeah. I'm partial to the cat, sorry. Yeah. That oil? Yeah, it's All right. Yeah, they've had them delivered before where there's no oil in them, so they're just really cautious, yeah. Okay. Probably have to top it off a little. Yeah, she's gonna need some. Not necessarily Oshkosh, but yeah. other other brands. Yeah. You got the transmission right here. You want me to check that quick? Uh, well, it had oil pressure when it came on. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense, though. You got burned with one. Yeah. I would. It's pretty though, I'll say that. For now. Yeah. A few years of wear and tear and yeah. uh, guess depends on how hard a year you guys get. Promise it to be just that. Thank you, sir. No troubles. That's a monster, man. That's it. Paperwork says 44,000 for weight. That's the biggest one they make. Is it? No, it barely fits in the well. With the with the broom head. Yeah. If you get any bigger, they'd have to shift the broom to Blower separate. Blower separate yeah. and I'm glad they didn't do that because I wouldn't want to have to try to put that piece of shit on there. Oh, I've seen them do it. It's I it's do. a little process. I could believe it. Past my ability. I want to see somebody take one old one. It's like all messed up. Like try to shove a car through there. <laughs> Maybe not a car. Trees. I want to see a car. Probably Make mulch out of a car. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can do that, but I can see it tearing up a <coughs> old growth forest, though. Oh, well, probably could. Now, well, either way. See what? It's got a brake on that transfer case. Yeah, I was looking at that, too. Uh, Brakes on the axle and then a, and then not a quite a pinion brake, but yeah, it's yeah. pretty much. Yeah. One on each side, too. No shit. Front and the back. I gotta go make my report. See ya. Have fun. Oh, who's uh, who wants to sign paperwork? Is that him or everybody points to you? <laughs> you should have, man. No one wants to be a small guy. Would have been him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let me get your paperwork quick. Alrighty. Well, you even got a pen. That's why you're prepared. Yeah. That's why they pay me the mediocre bucks. Oh, stop it. So we are just signing that we got it. Right there, right. anywhere on the bottom. On the big one, too. It's down, down here somewhere? Yeah, anywhere down there is cool. You might get a copy of those, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You gotta peel them off. You get that one, and you get that one. And I get the originals. Sweet! Right. Get this thing offloaded and get it inside. And Where you want it? Uh, that's our mechanic, Dave. Uh, the open uh, bay straight up there 
right, the last one on the right that's open. Okay. Oh, Nose okay. in or back in? Uh, back in. Wait. Back in? in? We do got a, we have a yeah, pit in there too, just a heads up. Okay. Yeah, I'll just have someone guide. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll get, we'll have David and uh, Jeff up and guide you in there. Excellent. Comes the air. Release the parking brake. Put in gear. Away we go. the end of the trailer. This way the broom does, or blur, keep on a broom, the blower. This way the blower doesn't hit the ground. Off the ramps. You know, last time I did this was with a striker getting it inside a building. I got a lot of comments. Shouldn't have done that, blah, 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 blah. I probably don't have to. But there is a thing called superior service and I try hard to do it. Believe it or not. Watch my man in the mirror there. I lose sight of you in the darkness. What's that? I lose sight of you in the darkness back here. Okay. It does have a backup camera on it. Yeah. It's hard to see though, so I can see what it actually looks like. Yeah, you got it. Alright. I'm watching him in the camera. go
Alrighty. I just crushed my glasses. I sure did. Look at that. Nice new one fixed. I forgot I was wearing my sunglasses. I couldn't see in the screen. <laughs> All right, there you go. Cool. Thank you. Excellent. All right, I'll go put my trailer back together and get out of here. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Excellent. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Absolutely. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All righty. I do stuff like that because I try to provide superior service you know, for future endeavors. Yeah, you know, I'm for this one too, you know. Try to have a good relationship with the customers, make them happy. Oh, where to throw my gloves? There they are. All right. Put the air back to my shocks, or my bags, I really should say.